Hey Nim Tax and welcome back. This is Ash from Heal My PC. So today I've got a bit of a special thing for you. We're going to do a live heart transplant. Anyway, we've got two almost identical laptops. These are both the Lenovo G510. And uh, I'm going to link you to a different video which I did of how to troubleshoot a laptop which is turning on with some LED lights but there is no display somewhere up there or in the link below now these two um, the only difference is this laptop has got an i7 and this laptop has got an i5 apart from that I think all the other specs are okay now this laptop if you remember the back cover was taken was kind of broken and we identified the motherboard is dead or possibly the graphics card was dead it wasn't worth replacing or repairing but the client went ahead and got himself a different laptop which the motherboard is working and you can see the evidence here so basically I've plugged in the uh, VGA cable to a monitor and that's coming up and as far as I can tell everything else is working now um, the problem on this laptop the one that the motherboard is working is the screen isn't working which again is a testimony to how we can test for a broken screen right so what we're going to do today is we're going to swap parts from both of them to make one better laptop and uh, the intention is to take the i7 from this one put on the motherboard of this one and to take the screen which is working hopefully on this one and swap it to this one which isn't working so we'll see how that goes or I may swap it the other way around we'll see how it happens so stay tuned and we'll get to work while the repair footage plays out in the background let me link you to another disassembly video of a single laptop for advice on how to tackle this kind of repair look in the annotation card or description below before you do any repair on your computer, remember that it's entirely at your own risk and that you should consult a professional if in doubt. Also, why do so many people still not understand the importance to back up all your data, regardless of repair or not? Guys, you should back up all of your data in at least two places. Three is recommended. For this transplant, the first thing you need is a labeling system for all of your parts and screws and keep them separate in different boxes whilst you disassemble. I would suggest to start working on the one you want to keep. Also, only attempt this kind of repair if you have at least two hours undisturbed minimum as you don't want to leave two laptops open and go do something else. It's a nightmare to go back without risking both lost parts and lost memory, but gaining frustration and stress and ruining both laptops. One thing which I did not check until after the transplant was done was the wireless function. Link above or below for that repair video which I did later but is already uploaded. Funnily enough, the Wi-Fi cards were not compatible with each other, i.e. I thought that being similar laptops from Lenovo, one could easily swap out the parts. Turns out it did not work. In the end, I had to use the Wi-Fi card that came with the working motherboard which did the trick. It's possible that I could have looked for the device ID of the Wi-Fi card and tried to download and install the drivers for it, but swapping of the Wi-Fi cards was much faster and almost guaranteed to work. So this is something to bear in mind. If you are going to swap the motherboard, you may also need to swap a few other parts like the Wi-Fi cards, the touchpad and possibly even RAM. Just saying, you need to check. And possibly the hard disk would also be locked in with that motherboard, which would mean doing some fancy hacking work or reinstalling a fresh OS as the swapped disk may not boot up properly or may not boot up at all. Of course, while you have the laptops open, might as well go ahead and give it a good dust clean, including the fan, and also some new thermal paste application. On a side note, do you guys think laptops are on the decline? What about the free upgrade of Windows 10 from Microsoft. Is that giving you guys enough reason to extend the life cycle of your current existing laptop? I still don't own a laptop, although possibly I do need one. I thought about building one for a while, only if I could make it modular, but it's more trouble than it's worth. The main problem is accessing parts when troubleshooting the issues. Laptops are designed to be annoyingly painful to troubleshoot. So if I could somehow take laptop parts and literally plank them between two thin layers of plywood, which would make it easy to remove for troubleshooting, 
I will do that. And that will make it for a cool vid. So hit me up down below if you want to see that. Anyway, before screwing everything back, always test the laptop is turning on as long as you can connect all the relevant cables, keyboard, Wi-Fi, screen, RAM and hard disk. You can usually leave the battery out for testing until later. So use the charger instead to test. Okay, let's turn it on. There we go. So, so I guess this now leaves us the conclusion time. So what did we do? We had this previous laptop which had an i7 and the motherboard on there was dead. So my client, he went ahead and got himself a different laptop with very similar specs except that this one had an i5. And that one, the motherboard was okay with evidence that was shown on the, at the time that he bought the stuff, but the screen was damaged. So the easier thing would have been to transfer the screen from that one to this one, but he want, also wanted the i7, which he had, and this one had the i5. So we also did the swap around. The last thing he benefited was the, there was some extra RAM which came in the i5 laptop, and now he's got an upgraded 8 gigabyte RAM from a 6 gigabyte. So, should you do the same thing if you have a dead motherboard or other parts of your laptop if it wasn't working? The short answer is no, because it's quite a difficult task to do if you're not used to opening laptops. In the process, you could end up confusing the parts and having to troubleshoot endlessly and still may not be able to find stuff. Also, opening two laptops and putting them back together, in the process, you could break something very easily. I would recommend you to do this if you're used and very confident in your own skills with the knowledge that something may go wrong. Take it as a personal project. But if you had a dead motherboard, I would advise you to try and salvage the parts that you can or sell the rest off, even if you have to list them as for spare parts or repairs. Now, the reason he got a different laptop completely rather than getting a motherboard was the price. Now this motherboard, the replacement at the time cost almost 150 pounds, whereas he got this laptop for 80 pounds from eBay. It was a risky thing to do because you never know until you get the laptop whether it will be dead on arrival or not. But now, as you can see, we've got obviously the non-working screen, but the bezel, the frame, all these parts here, um, that for the top cover, the keyboard, hard disk, DVD drive, RAM, uh, dead motherboard, but there's an i5 in there, and also the battery, and not to mention the Wi-Fi card, and the back cover, but that's the one that was damaged from the other one. So, so you would, he would now need to try and sell these things individually to recuperate that money, because if I put this laptop back and sold it as not working i would have to list all the parts that's wrong with it it will go for very very little money the only other problem with this is it will take a lot longer to sell all of this if it sells at all so that's a risk you need to take the other reason why he went with a different laptop altogether rather than having the motherboard repaired number one i am not qualified or com confident enough to diagnose a motherboard on a component level to repair that Secondly, I did offer him the choice to take this to a person who does do component repair, but he decided not to. There may be some trust issues and I don't blame him because some shops do end up messing things up and then you never know what they're taking off your uh, motherboard or your laptop or your information. So there are some trust issues. This was Ash from Heal My PC. If you enjoy this kind of content, let me know down below. Also, I did not include in this video the full disassembly and repair because it's quite long and quite tedious, but I'm going to put it in a different link. If you guys want to see this, just give me a thumbs up and uh, also let me know down below. So until next time, peace out.